Hello, sir. My question is that since you have graced multiple responsibilities throughout your life, from uh, being a civil service officer to being a teacher, graduating from IIT and IIM to being an animal rights activist, so uh, how do you zone yourself out from one responsibility to another? No, I don't have to zone myself out. They are all related to each other. No? So right now, I am probably mentoring a few students. Yeah. But in the process of mentoring, I can also be an animal activist. In this particular interaction, uh, there was no occasion or opportunity to speak on that, but it usually does happen. One speaks on that. But I did speak as a Vedant scholar in the one odd hour we had. No? So, the various things that I am doing are really so intermeshed, they are inseparable. I begin doing one, I find myself doing each one. Hmm? And I thank life for this, that I don't have to deal with things that are in different dimensions. Hmm? I have to deal with different things, yes, but not with different dimensions. One thing just seamlessly moves into the other. Right? Because all those things are related. All of them are related because they are coming from the same center. Hmm? There is just one thing that I am doing and that one thing is manifesting itself as five different things. What is that one thing that I am doing? I am trying to bring bring freedom to you. Right. And in bringing freedom to you, those other five things are just thoughtlessly, effortlessly happening. It's, it's not the way we usually go through life. We live in the distinction between the personal and the professional, don't we? Yes, true. And even in the professional field, if we are doing something part-time, then it's quite possible that our day job has nothing in common with our evening job. That's, uh, uh, that's a miserable state to be in, no? Because that does not speak only of the, of the difference between the two jobs, rather the lack of connectedness between you and either of the jobs. Had those two things, those two jobs been related to you, then those two jobs would have been related to each other as well. And what to say of the great gulf between the, the office uh, work and the work or life at home? The moment you step into your home, you become another person altogether. And in popular wisdom, that's quite appreciated. They say there has to be work-life balance. You have to be one person there, another person here. You have to totally forget the office the moment you step out of the office. Hmm? All that to me is nothing short of hell. There is one life and there must be one center. And all that you do must emanate from the same center. Let's take people who gave their lives to something really worthy. Huh? Think of, for example, a revolutionary, huh? a freedom fighter. 
let's take the indian freedom struggle for example is it possible that a a freedom fighter would do his day job which is striving for the country's freedom and then return to the home hmm? to a wife totally anglicized and in love with queen victoria and planning to settle down in london is it possible no it's not possible hmm? but that's what our folk wisdom advocates they say no the day job is uh, just to earn the money that you would spend in the evenings and at night that's the only relationship between these two no not true you are at the center of your life everything in your life hmm, must be related to you and therefore those things must be very seamlessly reconciling with each other if there are things in your life things objects thoughts people who cannot sit with each other who cannot reconcile to each other then uh, uh, life becomes a problem no your boss wants one thing your wife wants another thing and you can deny neither your boss nor your wife so there is a great inner strife bit of a limerick great i are you getting it have one center and let let that one center express itself in innumerable ways now you are free to to be whatever is possible without worrying what would happen to the other aspects of your life hmm? oh if i devote too much time to my hobby what happens to my girlfriend because she is the greatest demand on my time there is a great problem here if you love badminton it would be great to have a badminton player as your girlfriend maybe i am not really prescribing something i'm just presenting a scenario at least have someone who does not hate badminton on one hand you are in love with badminton on the other hand you are in love with someone who hates badminton how will you live won't be wonderful to date on the court hmm yes so you are shuttling so somebody would ask <laughs> were you dating you would say no shuttling <laughs> so uh, uh, the freedom fighters you are talking of we have examples and we have examples from bengal <laughs> where they were couples as freedom fighters now there is no mismatch no conflict hmm for any of that to happen first of all there must be a strong center in life a strong center of wisdom something that you are settled on something that you can give your life to and if you have that one primary love in your life everything else gets peacefully settled around it hmm? then you don't have to worry about uh, this and that
Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, we may now proceed with the closing address. Thank you, Acharya Prashant ji, for the interactive session. So, to present a vote of thanks, I'll be requesting our faculty in charge, Dr. Fanindra, to deliver the vote of thanks. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, sir, for uh, uh, condensing a lot of wisdom into your answers for the students. Um, and uh, I also thank the ESL team, the student team, which has uh, worked very hard to conduct and organize this event. And also to the questioners who, was, who were able to pose a lot of interesting questions. Um, and uh, thank you for your time. I'm glad. Thank you so much, sir. We may start wrapping up the moment. Wonderful.